Okay, welcome everyone to Mega Life 21 Progressive Podcast. I'm your host, James P. Madonna and of Mega Life 20, 21, of course, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And I'm here with my special guest. Uh, you might know him as a performing artist. You might also know him as an evangelist, but I'm going to introduce you this time to the writer, Ken Create, who specializes in writing stories and screenplays involving uh, thrillers, mysteries, and the supernatural. Um, he writes screenplays and uh, and st stories related, you know, similar to poetry, but he has lots of screenplays already written, very deep, very mysterious, um, and um, they, I guess you would call them, they're, they're very similar to, uh, I guess, a cross between Alfred Hitchcock and Rod Serling's Twilight Zone, very, very similar. So, so very good to have you on our our very first Mega Life Twenty One Progressive Podcast Show. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, How Ken. How you going, James? All right, all right. Yeah, just uh, <clears throat> just try to speak up. Uh, so, um, what do you remember ballpark figure when you first wrote? The, the, the like the very first story that you ever wrote that was deep well I started getting into the Bible I'd say about 1982 and I'd say I first start writing I'd say about 1986 and they were just stories okay it was just like uh, you know ideas that would basically come to me it's always just material that you know I wrote and then later on, as I got older, and I went back and looked at them, they were, you know, they weren't bad, but there was a lot of stuff I had to learn. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you definitely um, had uh, the best mentors growing up, you know, watching mysteries, watching an Alfred Hitchcock sh a series, The Twilight Zone, you definitely... You combine that with your own intuition and foresight, and and you're a bit of a prophet yourself. Um, you see things that the average person does not see. You 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 probe very deeply, and between between uh, looking up to the very best talent in the industry, uh, 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 combining that with your decades of Bible study it seems to and give you the 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 uh, ability beyond the average writer way beyond the average writer well I look I look at basically we all have the ability to write so the more knowledge okay that you suck into you and the more reading you do, and the more information you learn, and it all feeds into you, then I think you have the ability to write. Now, there might be people that might have to correct your writing, all right? But for you to put something together, I think you have that ability because you have all this knowledge that is stored inside your yeah. brain. Oh yeah, well, hey, the best writers uh, 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 and authors or whatever, they have people, professionals that edit their work, and uh, besides uh, proofreading things and editing things, I still find typos, you know, mistakes in books. Well, oh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to find that, but if you look at certain people who are writers or even in the past, they're also like, okay very scholar in reading. These were individuals who did a lot of reading books or, you know, articles or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
Well, and, and they're all, writers seem to be um, separated in different categories. Uh, you know, you have your, uh, your people that write uh, novels, you know, uh, fiction, whether it be romance novels or, or whatever, they specialize in, 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 in fiction um, stories that are made up. And then, you know, you, you just you have other classifications of writers. Uh, um, it's um, it's not as easy as it looks, people, believe me, because uh, uh, you have to be inspired, and I, I'm just assuming it comes in spurts, because people do get, uh, their minds do go blank once in a while, where they can't come up with anything productive, and then all of a sudden, they get a brainstorm. You know, and it comes all at once, and uh, well, that's true. But like I said, the easiest way to write is you're a reader, right? So if you're the type of person that loves to read, and you know you read books and novels, like you said, you know what I mean. Then I think you have the ability to write. It's just that all my information comes from, you know living and seeing other people in situations they went through and also me getting into the word of god so i have a lot of knowledge that feed into my brain mm, so yeah. this is all fed into me okay now i have the ability to write to bring it out to the surface mm -hmm. yeah you're able to tie in bible prophecy bible study in with real everyday life everyday modern life plus experiences that you've been through personally and your friends and family might have been through and you tie it all in together and um, um, I, 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 I'm assuming this helps you a lot with your stories when you write mysteries well, yeah, and thrillers it does, yeah. it, it does but it also depends on the path you're on spiritual wise. Right. All right. So if, if you're growing in the word of God, you see things different. Yeah. And other people see things. All right. So if you're not in the word, the Bible says, you know, people in the world are blind to the truth. Oh, without a doubt. Okay. Meaning if they're not in the book. So if you're not in the book, you're blind. If you're in the book, you can see. Yeah. So the more you grow spiritualized, and the more you're growing to live a righteous life, all right, and you're obedient to God, and God shows you things because now you're walking in the spirit. And there's a lot mm -hmm. of confusion out there because, like, either what you said, oh, it's like, you know, you're some kind of like, a, you know, you could be some kind of prophet and stuff. No, no. That's not what it's about. You can prophesy to people, but all you're prophesying to people is the word of God and what's to come. I don't see signs. I don't see visions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's all from God's word. Right. So if I'm in the word and I'm growing in the word, and I go out and tell people and warn people, all right, now you're prophesying, but you're prophesying God's word. Yeah, you know, the difference between your mystery stories, your writings, and let's say somebody else who writes mysterious thrillers like Stephen King, the difference is Stephen King, Stephen King's stories are based on like fantasy, surrealism, you know, where your stories... I mean, they are based on fantasy, but even if you look at the horrors and you look at the thrillers, a lot of that is real. Right? Oh, yeah, if sure. You, if you see a thriller on Poltergeist and you see thrillers on Ghost and, and you see thrillers on Demons, okay, that's real. That's not fake. Oh, yeah. The uh, person uh, uh, wakes up with, uh, has nightmares and wakes up with deep scratches on their back. That, that's real. You know what I mean? That's real. I mean, those scratches are real. Okay. 
And uh, well, well, what I mean is... There are, things, there are things out there, if you go Alice in Wonderland and stuff like that, that's fantasy. Yeah. Well, well, what I what I meant that's, by that's Stephen fantasy. what I meant by Stephen King is his his stories almost seem to be copies of nightmares, you know, uh, uh, because a lot of them are silly and bizarre. And um, yeah, but it's also but if you read into him, it's also what he grew up watching. Right. I, he, he liked all the horror flicks. He liked all the horror movies. Right. All right. So that was his interest. So when he went into writing and eventually turned them into the movies, screenplays, that's where his heart is at because that's what he grew up watching. Right. Well, I, I'll tell you, I, I grew up watching pretty much the same shows you did because me and you are about the same age. Uh, uh, maybe even exactly the same. Uh, I, I watched Chiller Theater. Right. You know, I watched show The Outer Limits, of course, right. Twilight Zone. But mostly, I, I watched a lot of Chiller Theater and um, uh, um, oh, what was the other one? There was it was a couple. There was a couple of them. There was Chiller Theater. Um, but but you know, the the old classic horror movies is what I I grew up watching and. Uh, I watched Alfred, yeah. Hi Alfred Hitchcock, of course, in those days, before color TV, you know. I mean, you can't tell kids about the days of black and white TV because they look at you like you're from another planet, but... Well, of course, because it's a different society. Yeah, I mean, uh, at one time, that's all we had, and... Um, and uh, But I think the black and white... The black and white... Uh, uh, watching a, a thriller or horror or mystery in black and white, I think it it makes it more mysterious. Well, yeah, it does. And it's almost like it puts you there. Yeah. You know, but it's like even then that I watched in the past or even the ones up today, I, I, I don't watch none of that no more because there's nothing there for me no more. I'm not learning from that. Yeah, well, I, I I don't really view today's modern movies and and TV shows at all. To me, they're well. You know what? Once in a big while, I'll watch something on sci-fi, but a lot of them they they just don't do it for me. the The acting is ridiculous, yeah. and if it's not stupid acting. Right. or hammy acting or retarded acting it's like all they do is whisper all they do is curse right. and jump in out of, in and out of bed right. you know there's no real like real great actors and actresses anymore uh, uh, and 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 forget I don't even want to waste my time talking about situation comedies because they're a complete joke you know, mo most 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 of them are are very, very gay, and um, psh, and uh, there's always like they always put uh, they always put Jews in every show. Maybe because the, that's who runs Hollywood: the gays and the Jews. Oh yeah, but also when you look at different writings, all right, it's like there are certain people, all right that feed stuff to other people because this is the society you live in today. The writers that they hire are not. But, 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 they're, but they're feeding the public what is here today. Which, so which, even if you go music, they're feeding all these young kids negative music. Right. All right. Like if you watch the show Law and Order, Right, and that's been on for years. The guy who wrote that TV show, I think he was a prosecutor, number one. And number two, you know he did his homework from the newspaper and the news. Because he'll do an episode, and you watch that episode, and you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This happened a year ago in real life. He just changes the names. Right, okay. Reality. And this is what he's feeding you. What is 
going on in the world. So a lot of stuff that's written, a lot of stuff that's uh, played, all right, music-wise, singing-wise, right. fashion-wise, it's what's going on in society. So if you've got terrorism going on, all right, they're going to make movies about terrorism. So it's where you're at, okay, is where they go, all right, and make movies and TV shows. So if you got stupid garbage TV cursing comedy shows, all right, and that's where you're at in society, all right, the film, yeah, that's you, what you're getting. And you have no... No, nothing really that's funny on a situation comedy. The jokes are boring. They're not even funny. And like I said, every show is very gay, you know, and uh, the actors and, 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 and it's just not funny at all. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, I, 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 I was big fans of real funny sitcoms. The Odd Couple, you know, uh, All in the Family, uh, The Jeffersons, uh, uh, honeymooners, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, a Sanford and Son. Right, but if you look at all in the family, all right, and the way the son in law was dressed, and then yet, like, his friend would come in one episode to it, and it would be the hippies and the people. That's where society yeah. started to change. L Lionel, Lionel Jefferson had an afro, and, and at that time there was a lot of uh, civil rights. Uh, exactly. So protesting, he was yeah. feeding you where you're at in that society, and yeah. that's what they feed you. But if you watch stuff on TV, all right, and you're not going to learn anything from it, okay? Then you know what? It's like there's nothing there watching that show. Yeah. Well, that's why I only watch documentaries. I, you know, History Channel, and uh, or it could be A and E, it could be Discovery, it could be the right. Travel Travel Channel. Hi but History Channel is is pretty much on top when it comes to documentaries. I have to watch something where I'm learning. I'm learning something. So when I watch something or I see something that happened, okay, I go into that a little more deeper. Than another person, right. I see things a little more clear now than the average person. Right. Hey, you know what's funny? The writers on professional wrestling have been doing that for decades. They'll they'll take events and things that actually happen in real life, and they'll make a right. joke. They'll make a joke out of it, and they'll put it exactly. into into the pro wrestling event exactly. show. Um, now. I want to talk about a show that, you know, it's funny, uh, can create is, you know, the, when the holidays come around, they play marathons. Right. You know what the most popular marathon of all happens to be is the Twilight Zone. Right. People, I know people that were glued to the set. They didn't. They didn't care about all the other marathons. They wanted to watch the Twilight Zone. And the right. thing about the Twilight Zone, the uniqueness of the Twilight Zone, which was much better than uh, when Rod Serling tried to do Night Gallery later on. The Twilight Zone's king. You know, is that you totally were blown away. By the ending, you never knew what to expect, and you learn a very deep, valuable lesson from the episode. Yeah, because, see, the only way you really understood the Twilight Zone is if you were like a Twilight Zone freak. Okay, so it's like, I grew up watching that show, you grew up watching that show. Okay, and it was, when we were growing up, it was kind of weird, but we liked it. Right. But as we got older, and it came back on the air on different stations, you know, you start looking at that in a different way. So now, one time when I was younger, you know, I, I had the basement, me and my brother. Mm -hmm. 
my friends would come over and we'd party in the basement and stuff and put the TV on. I'd say, whoa, the zone's coming on. That's what I call it. The zone. They're like, yeah, that show's wild. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I watch this show. All right. So he comes on, he speaks. So then at the end of the episode, my friends are like interrupting, you know, talking. I'm like, shut up. Like, why? I said, shut up. You're going to find out what the episode was about. Because if you don't listen to him at the end, you don't know what that episode was about. So now he comes back and he speaks at the end. And my friends looked at me and they're like, whoa, that's heavy duty. I said, yeah, that's what goes over your head. And I said, when we were growing up, we didn't know that because we just watched the show. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I can think of the the episodes that stuck in my mind the most was like the librarian, you know, uh, uh, you are obsolete, you know, uh, Burgess Meredith. That was right. heavy. The Howling Man was very heavy. Right. I mean, these were all unbelievably. But you had to listen to what he said at the end. Yes. Oh, what what he said okay. was he was so ahead of his you time. Don't understand that episode. But what he says applies, I mean, that was the late 50s, early 60s. But what Rod Serling said, the lesson applies very much to today. It hasn't Of course. Of course. But, but there would be people that also watch the show and at the end hear what they said. He said, and it still, they still didn't get it. Okay. Because once I really got into watching that, now, like, when I watch it now, if it comes on, I study it. See, it's one thing to watch it when you're growing up, okay? But if you're moving in the direction of writing and stuff, okay, and it's always called your interest, all right? Now, when it would come on, I study the episode, and I'm learning. <clears throat> yeah, you're breaking it so down. I'm you're yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, if I sit there and I watch it, okay, and say there's, and my dad's in the room, my sister's in the room, okay, and they're talking, it's like, keep quiet. You know what I mean? Watch the show. Okay? You learn from it. You know? But it goes over so many people's heads that they really, really don't understand. Now, I read a lot of stuff about him. And even I read one article, it was like a bio page on him and stuff. There was episodes he wrote, okay, that he went through in his lifetime. Hmm. And if you really study that show, a lot of that show is dealing with your brain. That's why when you see the beginning of the song, you see one and one equals two and square minus pi and this and you see a brain go by and you see a clock go by An eyeball you know what i mean yeah, yeah 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 brain so it deals with your imagination and your brain when you're thinking that's why when you see kick the don't be up to kick the can yeah all right and they're in the old nursing home yeah all right they're in the nursing home but the, the guy at the beginning of the episode was see all the little kids kicking the can, and he went back in his brain and memory. Oh, wow, I remember when I grew up and I did that. And then he looked at all the old people in the nursing home, and it's like, they're ready to die, okay? But he's saying to them, you know, we still got life to live. You know what I mean? So he's bringing them out back when he was growing up to the people of his age. Remember when we were growing up and we did this and we did that. Now the people were like coming alive. And he goes, you know, I was watching these little kids today. They were playing, remember the game, kick the can? And I was just watching them and saying, wow, I remember when I did that. So now the other people were in the episodes like, yeah, I remember, yeah, remember we played kick the can? So they all were like coming alive. Like they weren't just in that nursing home ready to die. Mm -hmm. So what this guy was trying to get across to them, and Sterling was trying to get across to them, even though you're in a nursing home, okay, just don't stay there, and it's like, yeah, this is where I'm gonna die, because you'll die quicker than 
if you take the position you're in, all right, and still enjoy your life. Well, you see, the, you notice the state of mind, uh, uh, the lesson also that if somebody is old as far as years go, that doesn't mean they have to think old. No, no, but, but, but also if you really study that episode, what he's also telling you in that episode, when the old guy, all right, was telling the people, so at night he says, I got the can. We're all going to get together, we're going to go out, we're going to play kick the can. So now they're playing kick the can, and the one guy thought he was a crackpot. So he got the head people and saying, they're all out there. So they went to go look for him, and they couldn't find him. So the old guy who thought he was a crackpot, he seen these young kids, and he recognized them. And he says, I want to go where you are. You know what I mean? And he says, no, you can't come to where we're at. Like, we don't even know you anymore, okay? But also Ron Sterling is trying to tell you even each can't accept the fact that they're in their 70s, that they're in their 80s, all right? And and their, their lifespan is being young and middle is gone, mm -hmm. okay? So they want to try to do things to bring that youth back, okay? You can't bring your youth back, but you still can do things. Yeah, well, I, I'll give you an example. My uh, my mother is, um, I guess she's 83. Uh, she was born uh, July 4th, 1932. So uh, she has friends that are um, younger than her that act and look older than my mother. Right. And, and they... She was always into dancing and music, and, and right. she used to go, you know, to Casey's, which uh, became Joey Harrison's later on in, in Clifton. Right. You know, she used to go out disco dancing, dance clubs every week, and she enjoyed music, and she enjoyed dancing. And, and, and she always did things that younger women did or middle-aged right. women she never did anything that old people do that seniors right. do she 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 refuses to go to a senior citizen club right. or a senior citizen center she says i don't want to hang out with those people i don't want to hang out with those those old those old geezers and old bags they're going to drag me down they're they're going to make me feel depressed and uh and you know what her state, uh, her attitude worked for her. Um, but yeah, it, it, it does, but, but if she knows something, then there's nothing wrong with her going there to liven up their spirits. Yeah, maybe she can do something to inspire them, you know? Absolutely. Uh, um, now, you know what's funny about the Twilight Zone? You ever notice the similarity to um, the movie that Jim Carrey made called Liar Liar where he played a lawyer and his son uh, had one wish on his birthday and his wish, that, his wish was that his father would always tell the truth right. and after that Jim Carrey was telling the truth as a lawyer <laughs> telling the truth right. all the time well that reminds me of that uh, Harry Honeycutt the car dealer in the Twilight Zone right. Harry Honeycutt comes across this car that had a curse on it and the curse was he had to tell the truth. He had to be honest. And here was a bullshit car dealer, Harry Honeycutt, lying all the time. Right. And he was telling people, no, you don't want this car, this piece of junk. You know, be before, a piece of junk had character. He t he'd say to somebody, no, this is not an old junk, this car has character. But because of the curse, he had to tell the truth. Right. Well, that was very identical to liar liar so right. what you said before is that people recycle ideas and concepts and things they see and they just give it a different name well yeah because, because even if you look at say people like in hollywood or even not in hollywood okay and they get to a certain age all of a sudden, they're 
ear starts turning gray, so they got to put that stuff in their ears to, okay, to make them look younger because they can't look in the mirror and face the fact that, wow, you know, I'm 64 years old. Well, okay? yeah. I still want to be 40, but you can't go back. You can mm. still enjoy your life yeah. at that age. So if you have gray hair, accept it. Well, gray hairs, they could come before a person looks old. Before you get wrinkles, you, you can start getting gray. I'm, I got some gray hair. And you, you know what my dentist told me? James, you got to color your hair. You, you got to get rid This stuff's got to go. This That's has got to go. What talking about. Well, okay. I could color my hair because I... The, I the, color my hair too. I, I mean, the, the, dye, the dollar tree, the dollar store has the color. I could do it. and I've done it before. You know, it's like... Yeah, uh, I, I could... I could do it myself, okay? But right. me, that's a cop-out. That's yeah. what society wants oh, you this, to do. This has got to go. you got to get rid of this gray, she says. Okay, so, so, so you fit into society, okay? Because even I went to go do an event and it was down at Patterson and it was by the pool, mm -hmm. the festival, the pool. They were doing an event there. I'm coming through, okay, now I'm getting gray here, okay? So there was these two young girls who looked at me and they say, hey, look at that old man over there. And I looked at them, I'm like, yeah, okay. You call me an old man? Yeah, all right. Okay. Have a so dance. I have no idea the power that is lying inside me. Yeah, but if they, they if feel like eighteen years old, if if they would have if they would have challenged you to a dance off, they would have been very very embarrassed. Well, they not only would be embarrassed, okay, but see, I'm fifty eight years old. Right. All right. You're about to, around the same age. Right? Well, I'm fifty six. Okay. So now people say, "Well, how old are you?" And I said, "Well, I'm fifty eight." So like, man, you're getting old. You know what I say to them? That's just a number, man. That's just how long you've been on this planet. 58 years yeah. old. Well, may maybe they're and miserable. You know the truth. And your spirit, all right, is going to live forever. All right? <clears throat> no matter if you're a Christian or non-Christian. Okay, you're going to live forever. So 58 just means a number. It's yep. about the yeah, but you see how they try to bring you down because maybe they were unhappy? Well, they try to bring you down because they don't understand the truth. All right, like when my mom passed away, my friend said to me, he's my age, he's 58. My mom said to me, how old was your mother? I said, well, she was 85. He goes, that's a long life. He goes, well, I'll take another 10 years, okay? How could you say that? How could you say, I'll take another 10 years? You'll take it? Just give me another 10 years. Okay, so now you got another 10 years. Okay, what are you going to come back and say, I'll take another 10 years? <laughs> uh, of, of course. Uh, of, of course people don't uh, want to. They... The bottom line is people cannot accept the fact that they're getting older. Because when people start to get older, okay, time is running short. Yes. Okay, that your death is coming. And people can't accept that. Well, yeah, it just means you're closer to the Grim Reaper. You're closer to death. You're closer to death. Okay, so now I look at death. See, my philosophy is, because I study the Bible, okay, you cannot enjoy life until you understand what death is. Once you understand what death means, and you get that out of your way, okay, you can enjoy your life. But if you don't know what happens after the grave, after you pass away, as the world says, mm. right, and now there's the grave, you're dead, mm -hmm. If you don't understand what happens after that, well, uh, 
That's why people cling on to life. Oh, he clung, he, 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 you know, he gave it his last effort, you know, to live. Yeah, because he doesn't understand what that means. Well, I know, I know an atheist, so, I know an atheist so that, that says you... Because this is all they know, all right? But if you understand, all right, what that means after you leave this world, you can enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, this, I know this guy who's an atheist says you just, you just rot in the ground and that's it. I go, you hey. sure? I says, you, you, you mean to tell me, you mean to tell me with the advanced, I mean, I know humans are inherently sinful and, and, and wicked, but, you know, with, with the advanced minds that humans have, I said, you mean to tell me that you don't believe anything, anything occurs after death at all? He, she, he says, no, no, you just rot, that's it, goodbye, that's it, you're done. Yeah, but that's his philosophy. Mm. But that man, I guarantee you, if he really sat down and got deep with that guy, I guarantee you that guy said he's afraid of death. Well, I know he has issues. I know his father abused him and everything, you know. No, which I understand. I know he okay. But when these atheists come along and say, well, no, nah, I'm not afraid. You're full of crap. You're full of crap. You fear that. What if he was what if he was hanging from a ledge for dear life and he was hanging on he was you know his his legs were dangling he uh, he'd be praying real quick he could be but he could be also too far gone you know right. and you put it this way the lord gives you a chance he gives you a chance he gives you a chance he gives you a chance okay but in the bible it says every day that goes by man's heart is getting wickeder and wickeder mm -hmm. two, but every day that goes by People re are re refusing the call of salvation. That heart gets harder. Another day goes by, that heart gets harder. Another day goes by, that heart gets harder. So the hope, all right, that was once there, it's almost going down the deuce. Yeah. Well, you you, you know two ten. You're giving over. You're done, bro. You you know two Timothy. You 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 know. Uh, what it says about how people will become and uh yeah. Yeah. and you're seeing it you're seeing it you're seeing it man. right but, it, but the bible says don't be strange when you see these things don't be say wow what's happening here no you should know this see i mean look look at what's happening the the top 20 percent or one percent one to twenty percent of the richest people in the United States, now they want to take away everything from the poor and the middle class. They want to take I, away I agree with you. everything, even your Social Security, your Medicare, right? Uh, 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 um, unemployment insurance, uh, you name it. They want to take it away. Food stamps. So even the veterans, they don't care about. No, they don't care about nothing. Because they have theirs. I got mine, and that's all I care about. Doggy dog world, man. And what makes the world go around? The greed. The money. The money is their god. That's this world. That okay. is the material world, Satan's world. Uh, it, 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 money is the god. And you, that's it. You know, and you were telling me... I'm alone, and you're different. And if God gives you a talent, and the Holy Spirit is controlling you, and people see this, hey, they can mock you, they can persecute you, they can put you down, or they can really dig what you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now if you go a little deeper, when it becomes into the spiritual part with Satan, Satan looks at you as a threat and says, you ain't getting there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring all people your way. All right, well, you think the door is open, that's closed. Mm -hmm. And that's closed. And that's closed. Okay, so you're mocked, you're persecuted, you're put down. That all comes from Satan because you are a threat. And anybody who's a threat, he wants to take down. So 
Well, he wants you to get to the point to say, throwing the towel can create this. You don't got it. You think you do. Yeah. But you don't got it. Look, you can't get no shows. Why are you still doing this? All right? Nobody wants you. If you don't try anything. Yeah, but if you fuck. The Bible says press on. Right. Endure to the end. So if God gave you a talent, all right, and he's giving you abilities, and you're out there for Christ, you can't throw in the towel because you're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. Right. But but you notice how people that sell out to the evil forces and showbiz, show business and entertainment, you, know, you, know, you notice how quick they get rich? Of course. The whole world, the whole world can be yours if you bow down to me. Of course. Okay, but now it's affected into the body of Christ. <laughs> yeah, it's invaded the body of Christ. I mean, when I was going to church, you had the hymn book, mm -hmm. and uh, my friend played the keyboards. You know, we had a little choir, and we sang out of the hymn book. We don't have that no more. No. The gospel performers, okay, that they put up the words in back of them, of their songs. Mm -hmm. And that's what they think. Yeah. Now, I just want to say that Mr. King Create the Writer has multitudes of stories and screenplays that he wrote. He has many already. It's not like he's an aspiring writer that's just, you know, breaking into the business. No, no, he's got lots of stories. And uh, uh, do you have a deep story or poem that you could read to the folks now? Or, you know, I, I could play very lightly on my drum in the background? Well, I, I, I could tell you about one episode I got on my head. Okay. All right, that basically happened because I seen it in life. Okay, this is a this is a story that's written down. No, I'll tell you what it's about. Oh, okay. Okay, so what happened was when I was younger, we used to go to the you know the dance club, the bomber club. Right. And I seen something happen while well, I heard the story. All right, but later down the road. I said this recently, that's an episode. You inspired you. Okay, right. So now what happened was, we were on our way to the club. 86 Bomber Squadron Bar, up. right? Yeah, we're going to the club, the traffic is backed up. We're like, wow, what's going on here? So we finally got to the point where we made a move and we went down the road but the parking lot was packed. The parking lot was backed up. So when we finally came in, bouncers said the club is closed wow. at night. So we said, why? Why is it closed? He said, because about a half hour ago, there was three young kids who parked across the street. But this is what they did when it was packed. And they ran across the street. Two of them made it, but one kid didn't, and he got hit, and he died. Okay, so the place is closed. So me and my friends are like, wow. So we left. Years later, this is how God works. Years later, just recently, I thought about that. And I was like, that's an episode. So, what the episode is about is the three young guys, they all work. Okay? Well, one goes to college and two work. But on Friday night, well, they even get together and they go to a club. So, I have all three of them in three different set, uh, three different parts. Working, going home, eating, taking a shower. Hear the telephone call, yeah, I'm coming to get you. But so one picks up one, the, the one, and then he picks up the other. Now, it's all three of them, they're heading to the club. Okay? Now, they're going to party, 
they're going to have a good time. Little do they know, they don't know what's going to happen. That's the unexplained. Mm -hmm. so that's why what I'm saying is you don't know when your time is up. Okay? So anyway, they park the car. All three of them get out. They run across the street, two make it, one gets hit, okay? He's laying there, the ambulance come, they're trying to bring him back to life, and they're like, he's dead. So they put the blanket over him, they cover him up, the ambulance is gone, but the club is open. It doesn't close. So now all the people get in the club, you got the DJ, music playing, people drinking, you know, partying, and all of a sudden, it's going around. Wow, did you hear what happened to that kid? Wow, yeah, he died. Wow, so that's what's going around. All right. Now, it gets to the point that DJ's really, like, busting some music out, and they're all on the dance floor dancing. Having a good time. Having their time. All right. And all of a sudden, the camera would take place, all right, where you see them dancing, and it's like them, all right, and then to their feet, then to the dance floor, the wood, and underneath the dance floor. And it goes all the way down to hell. And it shows you this kid who was killed. So he tried to walk across, run across the street. The kid that got hit and got killed. You see him in torment. Which is hell. Was he uh, was he a kid that was like very spoiled and selfish and into no, it, no, it don't even have to be spoiled into drugs. Uh, well, well, what well, makes you kidding. what makes you think I, uh, a regular kid? Where do you want to go with the story with the kid? Okay, he could be a casual drinker, whatever. Okay, but you can have him as a good kid. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, Whatever. I got a, I got a, I got a little lad, a little twist. Picture this: unexpected death. The kid gets hit. He's young. He, you know, of course, he ne he didn't think it, it was going to be his last day on earth. That day, he goes to the club. He doesn't make it. Okay, his spirit, because it was so sudden, his his soul or his spirit can't accept the fact that he's dead. His spirit walks into the club thinking that he, he that he's really walking into the club. All of a sudden, he's in a club and it looks very, very eerie. It looks very uh, um, uh, um, like uh, strange, with, with strange like red smoke and he all of a sudden he starts to see evil figures walking around uh, with red eyes and he, and he t and he's asking somebody what is this uh this is not halloween is this a halloween party and nobody's talking to him everybody's ignoring him no and he comes to realize that this is no halloween party that these are demons and they try to they try to get him and he's running from them and you could. You well, that's pretty good, but you're going more, I think, into almost a fictional part, and it's going to be reality. Well, if he's you know? dead, uh, 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 there might be a little process before he gets taken to a place of torment. I mean, you know. No, no, it's got to be reality. It's got to be real. Yeah, but but but, but him but going to a place of torment is, is not real. Nobody nobody has been yeah, able to prove that. There has to be a message. Okay, so what you're saying is, yeah, that's good. Don't get me wrong. Okay, but that's not reality. But you got to show that. Well, the, the, but there's no proof that the kid is going to be in hell. But you got to show people that that place is real. Right, which means before before the kid gets taken out that night, you got to show him what kind of a person he is interacting with his friends. Well, yeah, but that's the episode. The episode, right? That's the end. So at the end, this, this would be the end. 
All right, so for the first 25 minutes, if you can do a half hour, could just be, yeah, standing around him and his two friends, or maybe friends of theirs. Okay, then it takes place at the end. Now, you can have them, you can have him in torment at the end, and it ends. Okay, or you can have him in torment, all right, and then the end can be, it comes back, all right, the cameras come back up, you see the dance floor, the wooden floor, and people dance it, and you can end it that way. Yeah, could do that. Or you can end it, it just goes straight down to hell, you see it in the torment, and it ends. Well, right. I don't know. <coughs> what, what, okay. what, 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 I come back. Right. Like Rod Sterling would, and tell you, okay, what this kid went through and where he ended. Did this actually happen? Right. And is there a place that people, okay, that weren't right with their creator, is there a place of torment? Yeah. When you die. Well, you know what? I'll let you decide on that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, le leading up to that, you could show how this kid wasn't right with his creator. Maybe he just wasn't a very nice person. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that aren't. Okay? Alright? This happened to this kid. Now, where he was, okay, when it came to the Lord, I have no idea because I didn't know this kid. Okay? But I'm showing the reality that there are people, okay, in that age bracket that die. Right, but I'm just saying you got to make a you got to make a story out of it. You just can't have the kid. No, no I I have no idea who that kid was. Okay, and well, I'm not judging that kid. Well, I I know, but I that no that's idea. not enough time to fill up the story. You got to do something before the kid gets killed. I know. I just told you that. Okay, that could be the end. The end of it. Okay. All right. All right. But we're talking about reality. It's reality. No, it isn't. Is, is this kid in hell? I have no idea. Yeah, but what? Yeah, but when you say reality is what kind of a life he lived on earth when he was alive nobody the word reality doesn't apply to what happens after you die because nobody was able to prove well i go by what the word says I'm yeah going by what the word i know i'm based on faith you're right you're right okay that's what i'm basing this on i know okay so what i'm saying is i didn't know this kid i never met this kid i never hung out with this kid mm -hmm. i'm not judging that kid but when it comes to reality, there are people in that situation. Kids go to clubs. They OD and they die. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Oh, it happens all the reality. time. And a lot of these kids that OD and die coming out of these clubs don't go to heaven, bro. Hey, there's, a, there's kids that die in car accidents from texting. <laughs> exactly. Just texting. Okay. And you got to look at the whole world is called but few were chosen. So the majority of people that pass away, bro, they don't go to heaven. Okay? They're blind. They reject the message. Right. I'm going by my faith. Right. I'm going by what the Bible says. Right. Well, so for me to do a TV show mm -hmm. and have certain episodes like this, this is my faith. But I wanted to get out there so people watch the show and say, Whoa, what if this is really true? Yeah. Well you gotta you gotta tweak it and doctor it up. You can't you gotta you got you can't you can't approach mainstream entertainment no, with, you, no. with religious it's, episodes. No, it, it's not religious episodes. Okay. That's why it's called I let you decide. It's your choice. Right. Either accept or reject. No. They got shows on sci fi. They got movies on sci fi. They got movies out there about hell, bro. Are you kidding me? And they're huge. 
they're huge. Okay? So as long as you don't mention the word of Jesus Christ, you can get that on the air. Oh, there's lots of movies and shows about angels and demons and... and, and oh, that's and what I'm talking about. Poltergeists and all kinds all right? of things, yeah. So you, can, you can get that on the ear, all right? And you can just, just mention your creator's name, but you have the message there. And God will reach the people he wants to reach that are watching that. Yes. But it's getting out there. But it's getting out there, right. That's the bottom line. That's like when I perform, okay? And there's an audience, and I do the performance, and they like it. But then there's other ones like, eh, ah, that's stupid. I don't know who God's reaching. That's not my job mm -hmm. to know that. But I'm there, and I'm doing my job. And that's what I'm called to do. Who God is saving when I do these shows, I have no idea. Not my job, but I'm there. Yeah, you're there. Oh, God willing, if this TV show does happen, it's not my job to know who's becoming saved. That's not my job. My job is it's out there. You let people decide. You let people decide. That's all. And you let them decide, but I'm doing my job. Yeah. I'm getting it out there. Now there might be preachers who watch that and say, well, that's cool. But there might be other preachers who watch that. No, that's not right. That's, that's, that's not what I'm worried about. Okay? If I'm doing my job and God tells me and gives me these ideas, okay, and right now they're in my head, and if it does come my way and they're turned into scripts, who put that material together? Not me. So if he puts it together, then he wants it out there. And if it's out there and it's approved from him, do you think I'm worried about a preacher? Do you think I'm worried about a pastor? Mm. It's not my problem. Yeah. Okay? If it's God's work and he puts it out there and he uses me and it's pleasing him, I'm not worried about that. I'm doing my job. Right. Okay? That's what it's about. Yeah. That's what I do. Mm, good. Well, let's uh, let, let's let's uh, <clears throat> let's give the the folks a sample of uh, one of your stories, um, um, so I could I could bongo in the background. Well, let me see what I got here. Yeah. You know, this time you get me off guard. Let me see. Let me grab something here. Let me see. Uh, let me get it over here. Yeah, just let me know ahead of time when you're gonna when you found something. Well, well then I would have to go in the other book, but I wanna see if I don't have to go into the book. Got one? Yeah, this one's called The Prisoner. The Prisoner? Prisoner. Prisoner, okay. Which can turn into an episode. Yeah. Alright. Ready to roll? Go ahead. Ready? Yeah. Alright. Prisoner. You're locked up. Bound in chains. Tormented day and night. With no light. Ride a flight, but you are pulled in different directions, and you're wound too tight. Or a prisoner in the mind, prisoner. You had all the clothes that were covered in glory. You had people who drove you around. You had first-class tales and people making your deals. You were a prisoner in the mind, a prisoner. Lived on the edge with money to spare. You sat with all the 
hours. We're looking at hours. Age was your sanctuary. In your life, you had a calling. Your light has faded out to the night because you were a prisoner in the mind, the prisoner. That's it. Wow. Excellent, excellent. Okay, now, now that story came to me. Huh? How did that come to you? All right, that story came to me because I was cutting along for my friend, and my friend came by to pick me up, and he said, Ken. I says, what? He goes, yeah, never guess who died. And I said, who's that? He said, Michael Jackson. That's how that story came to me. And and that's the, that's how you learned that Michael Jackson passed away? Well, yeah, but I looked at him. Okay? He had the chauffeurs. He had the limousine. He had the clothes. He had the restaurant. He had his mansion. People drove him around. His stage was his sanctuary. Ah. Uh -huh. He had money to spare, but he also had money doing his bidding yet. All right, James, I gotta close this out. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, Can Create, the writer Can Create, for your very first appearance on Mega Life 21, a progressive podcasts and uh we'll catch you next time we got it we got to do a, a second one all right we'll make it a series Thanks. if possible all right all right good night this has been a mega life 21 production